Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. I hope you're all doing well today, you and your families. My name is Lukman and welcome to another quick tip video tutorial. And in this one, I want to show you how to make a sliding door system with a button that you can use, well, buttons that you use to open and close those sliding doors. So how about I hit play here and I'll go ahead and press the open button. You can see the sliding doors open and I've just got my debug.log going there. And if I hit close, the sliding door closes. So yeah, it's nice and simple. Okay. And I pretty much run it all through code. You could use animations to help you, but I just found the code much easier to do. So I just wrote, wrote the whole system in code and I'm going to show you how it works. And uh, first of all, I'll just show you the game object arrangement and you can download this project from uh, my website. So go ahead and just download uh, the build to well, the whole program. I mean, the project folder from my website, you can open it up and then uh, use this for yourself. Uh, so inside of the sliding doors, uh, look, I've got this script here. It's got a reference to something called the left door, the right door, and uh, the door frame is nothing more than just these gray items here. That just a visual thing. That yeah, that's the door frame, and inside of it, yeah, it's made up of these other game objects. Uh, at the top of this is the canvas with control buttons. Okay. And this is a world space canvas. Just take note of the size of it. I've had to scale it right down to like a width of one, a height of one. And look, I've just positioned it here. It's in world space, obviously. And inside of that are my two buttons. And look, I've just sized these as how I wanted to size them and change the color as how I wanted to change them. The key thing is at the bottom of them is they have an on click uh, method assigned. And that's this one. We're, we're going to go and have a look inside of the script and see how that works. Basically, the logic is so what's the logic here? The logic is that you look at the door and you consider is the door actually open? In this case, no, it begins. So if, if I hit play, the door starts off in a closed state. So I just monitor it as you know, is it open? Are the doors open? If the doors are not open, then if you hit the close button, it means nothing. Now, if you hit the open button while the doors are not open, then that'll trigger it to say that the button open button has been pressed. So now that the open button has been pressed, uh, then it'll also cause the doors to start opening. It'll say set uh, pretty much. It'll let allow in the update method for the doors to lerp into position. So if I jump into the script, it'll make a bit more sense. So going right up to the top here, we've got our references that you saw in the inspector earlier. So I've got my left door, the right door. I just keep a copy of the transform and that's what I operate on. And then here's my variable. This is the actual speed of the door. And of course, I can just adjust it to whatever in the inspector. Size of door in X, that's very important. And the amount of door in wall, 0.9. All that means is by 0.9, I just mean that look, uh, that Basically, 10% of the door is sticking out of the door frame. That's exactly what it means. So 90% of the door went into the wall. And when I say size of door, that's also pretty obvious. It's got an X size of one. And that's what I'm just putting in the script. It's part of the calculation you'll see below. All right. And then I've got all these vector threes here. These are basically the positions to which the door will move for closing and opening. That's basically it. So I've got here like a left door closed target. You can see here left door open target one. I zoom in a bit more to help you out so you can see it a bit better. And a right door closed target, a right door open target. And you can see here something called private float start time. You're going to see that in action. That's for the lurping. Uh, the total distance to cover, that's very important. That's also used for the lurping. And then these three Booleans, they control the logic behind the system. Uh, so I do have a start method and in it I set some initial references. And in my update method, I'm opening doors or closing doors based on the conditions uh, that are available, based on the state of these Booleans, basically. So in my set initial references, I'm pretty much just capturing the closing target, you know, left door closed target is, you know, the starting position, like the door is already started in the closed position, right? So all I do is just capture the local position, note the local position, because I can move this uh, in whatever direction. Let me do a minus 45 so I can see the buttons. 
So I can move it into minus 45 degrees, and it makes no difference. I can move it into whatever angle I want it to go into, and it makes absolutely no difference to it, because I'm using a local position for, uh, well, my logic. So uh, there we go. So left door close target is equal to the left door dot local position. So that transforms local position. Same for the right door. Now the left door open target. Okay. So the open target for the left door and the right door is a bit different. For the left door, if we go back to Unity, the left door, I want it to go into negative x, right? Because you can see uh, this is in local space. So that's global. That's local. So this is local space. Yeah, I guess it's the same in this case because the door is oriented in that direction. Anyway, but the, I want the door to go this way, right? So I want it to go negative, And I want the right door to go in positive x, right? So coming back here, there's a slight difference between the calculation, between the, you know, making the new vector threes. So I've got here left door open target is equal to a new vector three. I take in the left door local position dot x and subtract from it size of door and x times amount of door and wall. So that will basically mean um, whatever local position dot x uh, and subtract from it basically an amount that is like, uh, what would that be? size of door is 1, and that's 0.9. So 0.9 is basically going to subtract 0.9 from this. So yeah, that's exactly it. My door's got 1 meter in size, and I'm pushing it 0.9 meters to the left. So that's exactly achieving what I want there. And the local position dot y and z are exactly uh, the same. It's not moving in those directions, so you just maintain those things. Uh, and same for the right door, except instead of subtracting, we just add that 0.9 of a meter to the right, OK? Now, total distance to cover. This is very important for the lerping, so we'll get to that. Uh, what we have here is simply calculating the distance that the door has to move between the left door closing close target and the left door open target. I just use the left door. You can use the right door. It doesn't matter. Uh, just use both the open and close target for the same door to just give a figure here. OK, now let's go to our method. This is the void open doors. We've got a void close doors, then we have public void button try to open doors, and button try to close doors. Now these are the buttons that you saw in the inspector, so this is the method that gets assigned. And what if it checks for, uh, you know, what it checks for is that if you try to open the doors, if our doors open, you know, this variable, if the doors are open, then just jump out of this method. There's no point trying to open the doors if they're already open, right? But when we start the game, uh, obviously the doors are not open. They're closed, and that variable is in the false state. So when you click that open button, open door button, this is actually going to find that, yeah, actually the doors, uh, it is in the false state. So that's not going to return. It's not going to jump out of the method. And we're going to capture the start time. Exactly what time is it right now in the game? And you're going to use that for the lerping. Then I'm going to say is door open button pressed is equal to true. And this means that, you know, I can't go and just start hammering on the other button uh, to make it try and close the door immediately. So there's a bit of a bit of a logic there you're going to see up above. So how, why don't I just jump up, okay? It's, it's pretty much the same logic for button try to close doors except in the opposite. So why don't I go up and have a look at the open door method. All right, so in the open doors method, I'm checking if our doors open or not is door open button pressed. So if the door open has an open button is not pressed, then just jump out of this method. There's, you know, it's, there's no reason to continue trying to carry out the rest of the instructions if the player isn't hasn't pressed the open button in the first place. But if they do press the open door button, then this is going to be true. So it's going to continue on. And the R's door, our doors open, you know, it's, they're not when we start the game. Okay, so now we calculate the distance that's covered every frame. Okay, so this is in the update method, right? This is how you lerp. So we, uh, we calculate the distance covered every frame. And that is equal to time dot time minus the start time. So you see the logic there with capturing the start time when we click the button. So if that time is, say, you know, uh, 1,000, so let's say it's some number called 1,000, and then the frames are passing, and now the time is 1,100, so it's 1,100 minus 1,000, which is equal to 100, times the move speed. That'll give us the distance covered. So if the move speed is 1, 
it means that you know 100 uh, I guess in this unit 100 meters would have been covered right so that's the amount of distance that would be covered and then our fraction of journey which is an important variable this pretty much determines where the door should end up in the lerping so you have to actually tell the lerp method of function you know what fraction of journey has been completed uh, at every frame right so float fraction of journey is equal to this distance dot covered over the total distance to cover right okay so that was what we calculated up above the total distance to cover so the maximum value of course is going to be one it's going to be a zero to one value and what this is now going to do so we've got our lerp here so we've got here left door dot local position is equal to vector three dot lerp from the left door dot local position uh, towards the left door open target position right and that open target is to the left for the left door right uh, <laughs> I shouldn't use the word right I should use the word correct and the uh, fraction of journey so as time progresses fraction of journey will get closer and closer to one isn't it if you think about that fraction of journey will continue getting closer to one and as it does so uh, the left door is simply going to get close then it'll assign to that position of the left door that's how the lerping works so you have to keep telling it the updated fraction of how far it is from where it starts to where it ends you have to tell the method where that what that fraction that's been completed is so you use the time the time right now and the time when you started doing this operation those are the things that you need to do for a lerping you need to know the time that you started you need to keep track of the time as it's progressing and you need to then use that to determine the distance covered and then use that to determine the fraction of you know how much of the journey is actually completed and then you tell give that to this method and it's going to then move the door to that position for you and that's it uh, pretty much so all i'm saying by at the end of the journey i'm saying if math f dot approximately both of the doors are moving at the same time right so i just use the right door you could use the left door it doesn't matter if math f dot approximately right door dot local position dot x uh is you know and the other uh position is right door open target dot x so that means the right door has reached the open target position doesn't it so if we're saying that its current local position is almost the right door open target position yeah that means we've gotten there now because it's a float that's why i did that that's why i use math f dot approximately i didn't use the comparison direct comparison because it's a float and it's not uh you know precise there's quite a few decimals there and then I'll just simply this is for myself debug.log doors open and then I say are doors open yeah it's true it's now the doors are open and is door open button pressed no set it to false with finished opening the doors and that's it and closing doors is the exact opposite operation so that's it so this logic is pretty simple uh once you once you start you you have to get used to sort of I guess programming I guess in my case I've been doing this sort of coding a, a bit so I am used to it uh, but once you start doing it then you get very used to it and it's very powerful I mean you can e easily set up a script like this in no time and you get going with it and it's very versatile and you can use it for other things you can make a single you know single sliding door if you wanted to uh, up to you how you want to do it you could make it into an elevator if you wanted to maybe I should make a video about that too how to make a platform elevator or something like that uh, yeah but okay, I guess that's it for this. So thanks very much for watching and I hope inshallah to see you in another video and I hope all your good efforts don't go to waste and come to uh, something successful and uh, something good. Okay, and don't forget to download the project off the, my website so you have this uh, as well. So you can have this as a resource and go ahead and use it. And uh, look, don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks very much and bye.